What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be making this fire table or fire pit that has a propane flame and it's made out of some cheap pine material, galvanized metal, and a self-poured concrete top. Check it out and see how we made it. So the first task we are going to undertake so that we can get it out of the way and let it cure is making the concrete top. To do that, we are going to be using some 3 quarter inch melamine material, so you got to get a whole 4 by 8 inch sheet to be able to do what we're going to do here, and we're going to cut that up and make this form. Now, this top is an inch and a half thick, and then we got to make sure we have the negative impressions so that this fire pan can sit down recessed inside of the concrete top. What I'm doing here is just making sure I have this perfectly centered in the tabletop, and I'm marking it out with a pencil so that I can put those negative forms inside there so that, again, the fire tray sits inside the table. The forms are also made out of the same melamine material, and I'm using some fast-acting CA glue to glue it down in place. And this little edge right here is going to make the shelf for the fire tray to sit on. As you can see, I've sanded a little bit of a radius around the edge so that it conforms to the fire tray very nicely. I'm going to add a little more CA glue in the cracks to make sure that the concrete material doesn't sink down inside it so much. Once the form is complete, we need to make sure that we caulk so that concrete doesn't go everywhere. And also, by caulking like this, it's going to give you a little bit of a radius on the countertop, which is pretty awesome. So right now, I, I don't even know what this tool is called. I saw Industrial Maker using this on one of his very, very helpful concrete videos. Link to his channel down in the description below. And also, the tools that I'm using in here are linked in the description below if you guys want them. Check out the description of the video for all of the links for things that I use. So we use black silicone caulk and use that just because it's very easy to see against the white melamine background. Put it in place, we use that radius tool to make sure we had a nice radius for the countertop. And now I'm going back and cleaning out the excess caulk. Now, one step that I did forget to do here is it does help to wax the corners before doing the silicone so that the excess caulk removes more easily. Once we have that radius done, into this countertop I am going to be adding some metal. Now I'm going to be using a countertop concrete mix from Menards. You can get that at your local Menards. It has fiber in it already. But in the past, I have used fiber mixed concrete and I've still had cracking. So I'm going to be using just this piece of galvanized fence material to add basically some rebar structure in there to make sure that this countertop, if it cracks, doesn't shift around. Now, every little imperfection or piece of dust or debris that you leave in your form will transform and show in your concrete material. So I'm using some alcohol wipes to make sure everything is nice and clean. It is in your best interest to spend a few extra minutes cleaning up to make sure you have a fantastically poured countertop. Now, this is what we're using right here. It is a fiber mix concrete ready to go from Menards. It's about $20 a bag, so it's much more or slightly more expensive than your Quickrete, your basic mixes, but it does pour fantastically. Now, this is the first time I've used it, but I have poured self-in-place countertops before using Quickrete mix, and it didn't come out nearly as nice. So I highly recommend this stuff from your local Menards. Now, I did add water, poured some of the mix in, mixed it up, added more water and so forth, and you want a relatively liquidy mixture so that it does settle out and self-levels, gets into any nooks and crannies, so in our case around that recess material uh, very well. You want to make sure it's nice and, nice and smooth, silky smooth, so that your countertops are smooth as well. So I believe we needed three buckets of concrete for this countertop and I mixed per the recommended manufacturer specifications, which was quite a few minutes. But then we had a nice pour into our mold and as you can see, it's self-flowing and self-leveling out very, very well. I did use 
uh, my hand with a glove on there to make sure we had concrete nice and smooth on the bottom and up into the corners of our mold. Once we had all that concrete material into our mold, give it a good shake again, making sure we're nice and flush with the sides of our mold. And then I took my reciprocating saw without a blade in there and went along the edges of the mold just to make sure we got any of those air bubbles out of there. So again, we're looking for that nice flush countertop, nice and smooth. Now we can't just chuck our fencing in or it would sink to the bottom, in this case, the top when you flip everything over and you would definitely see the referencing of the metal through the surface of the countertop. We don't want that. So I used some twist ties and a couple scrap pieces of wood to make sure I was able to hold that galvanized fencing towards, in our case as it's sitting right now, the top, which is actually the bottom of the countertop material, where we don't actually care so much what it looks like. We did want to make sure though that that, that galvanized material was a good half inch into concrete. Now it's been a couple of days, the countertop has cured enough to be able to remove the form and flip it over and let the other portions of the slab dry up. It is a very straightforward removal just to make sure that you don't leverage your tools against your beautifully poured slab. As you can see, I have my tool wedged against the particle board material at the bottom, so we're not actually cracking the concrete. Look at that. That turned out great. Highly recommend this countertop mix from Menards. Be careful moving these slabs around yourself because they are not light, but I was able to rock it up and release the form from the big section of the mold without any issues. And as mentioned before, it's looking really well. And this is also why you want to release from your molds because you can clearly see right here that there's some moisture that we want to make sure gets released from this slab evenly. Now I'm very carefully using the hammer to remove those negative, negative form pieces from the slab Again, just to make sure we can get everything to cure nice and evenly. And it, it turned out great. As you can see here in a second, I try to insert the Vavor burning tray. Um, again, links to that down in the description below if you guys were looking for the regulator, the piping, and, and the, the burn pan. That's all linked down in the description below. But as you can see, perfect fit. Measure twice, cut once. Now that we got that slab done, we're gonna set it aside and allow it to dry out for a couple of days before applying sealer to it. And in that case, we are ready to build the frame to hold that slab at a coffee table height on our porch. I'm gonna be using some one by pine material and they don't make this stuff like they used to. It is a bunch of crap, no matter what store you go to. Uh, so we're gonna make sure we cut out any warp material and we're gonna cut out any undesirable knots in there to make sure we get the best pieces for our fire table breaking that down at the miter saw based on the basic set of plans that I have put together. Those also are available for you at DIYTyler.com if you would like to help support the channel and download those and make your own fire table. I do have all the dimensions and all the material that you will need in those plans, which a portion of that you can see right here. And this is how we're going to make this frame. There's basically two different sections, a lower and an upper section that's basically a box held together by tight bond three and a couple of pocket screws that we made over on the Craig Foreman. We made up both of those frames and then we are going to screw the legs to the side to basically make our double frame table. It is relatively simple build, it goes together very quickly and is obviously sturdy enough to hold this several hundred pound concrete slab. Once you got your upper and lower frames together, it is time to add the legs, which also attach the two pieces together. Now we do want to make sure we have this offset right here, and it's going to allow us to put the galvanized material in without poking out in a way that you could cut your foot or cut your hand on if you walk or rub up next to it. Now the legs we're going to make upside down, so the top of the table is actually sitting on the workbench right now, and we're gonna make sure that first leg is flush add some tight bond three because this is an outdoor table, although it's not necessarily gonna get wet, but your best durability is gonna come with that tight bond three waterproof glue. Using the square to make sure everything is nice and square, adding that tight bond three and screwing everything together. 
Now I am using a board to make sure we have a three quarter inch offset from the ground because we are now working on the bottom of the table and adding that bottom frame together and, and now we kind of have everything together as we want it. Right here we are going to be adding some grates so that we can put the propane tank here so if we ever move the whole table it, it comes together as one piece and we don't have to make sure the propane tank is sliding accordingly inside. Also, there's gonna be a door on each side of this because there's quite a bit of space under there for some storage. Now, what we are doing for the siding on here is the same small graded galvanized material. Again, this is from Menards, save big money at Menards. Same stuff that we used on the outdoor kitchen. So we kind of have a little bit of symmetry going on. The designs kind of match with the outdoor kitchen, which is just outside of where this fire table is going to go. Now that tool right there is a tin cutting tool on the Rigid Job Max, and it really does make quick work of cutting this galvanized material. It's still sharp, so make sure you don't cut yourself if you do use this. Using some self-tapping screws to screw the panels onto the frame, and that's it. It goes up very quickly, and we are ready to rock and roll. Now for the finish on this, I wanna make sure we have some UV protection, so I'm going to be using some Total Bolt Halcyon. Comes in these bags, which is easy to massage and make sure you have a good mix, and you can also get the air out of the bag when you seal it, so the product lasts for a long time. I've used this product in several different applications, both brushing and spraying, and I highly recommend this stuff. It definitely has some good UV protection. So I added two coats of the Halcyon on there, and we were ready to move out to the porch after putting the doors on. I didn't really show making these. They're simple box with some hot screws in the background and the panels go in just like the rest of the material. And we are done with the frame, so it's time to go back to that slab, which is well cured right now, and add some penetrating concrete sealer. This is some stuff from Seal Creek, believe I got it at the Home Depot and uh, use it on a couple of other benches and they have held up fantastically over the years. So that's what we're gonna use on the slab here. Once that's all dried out, we move into the porch where we are going to enjoy this fire table immensely. I actually didn't even attach the fire table concrete slab to the frame because it's heavy enough that it's not going anywhere. And if we do wanna move it, it'll probably be advantageous to be able to detach everything. Fire tray fits right in there and we added some colorful fire glass from Menards into the tray, added our propane tank, attached to everything, and we are ready to rock and roll. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Check out the link in the description below for all the tools that we used and for the plans. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.